Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of uh, Bracknell Forest's executive. Um, colleagues, first of all, uh, apologies. I understand we have no apologies for absence. Is that correct? Thank you. And uh, uh, then uh, we move on to... Uh, Declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations, please, colleagues? No. Then the usual caveat applies so that uh, should any, uh, any discussion take an unexpected turn and you feel the need to, uh, to uh, declare a, a conflict, then please don't hesitate to interrupt proceedings so to do. Uh, we move on then next to the minutes of the executive that were held on the 16th of November. You've all had sight of those. Um, are there, uh, firstly, um, can I... Uh, seconded. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to move them. And thank you, Councillor Birch, for seconding. Um, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. That is unanimous. And uh, uh, are there any matters arising from those minutes that you don't see on today's agenda? No? Fine. Then, uh, colleagues, we move on to uh, uh, urgent items. Are we aware of any urgent items? No. Nope. No urgent items. Great. So that takes us to uh, key decisions. And the first... Uh, first item for consideration this evening, item 5, beginning on page 15, is the adoption of the Central and Eastern Berkshire Joint Minerals and Waste Local Plan. And uh, that's going to be introduced by the Executive Director of Place Planning and Regeneration. Thank you very much, Mr Hunter. Thank you, Lydia. Um, so this report is seeking the endorsement of the Executive to adopt the Central and Eastern Minerals Waste and Minerals and Waste Plan. Um, the executive will be aware that we've been working collaboratively with Reading, Windsor and Maidenhead, uh, Wokingham councils to prepare this Minerals and Waste Plan. And it's been developed in co uh, consultation um, with, the, with the, the general public. The, the plan sets out how we will meet our minerals and waste development, how it will be accommodated and managed within the plan area so that the needs for aggregates and waste management in the plan can be accommodated. Um, the report sets out the various stages of the plan development since its inception in 2016. Um, the development of the plan has included a number of public consultations and we have sought sites throughout that process um, for minerals and waste development. The formal examination of the plan took place in September 2021 and that was examined by a government inspector and following that, they sought modifications to the plan, of which we consulted on those. Following the consultation, the four authorities received a letter from the examiners in October setting out the modifications that are needed to the plan, um, and that it would, be enable, it would then enable us to adopt the plan um, in, in all four authorities. This report seeks endorsement of the adoption of the plan, which will then formally be adopted at, um, at Council in January. Following the adoption, the plan will be used to determine planning applications for minerals and waste development and will form part of the overall development plan. It will replace the current minerals and waste plans, which date back to the late 90s and early 2000s. As mentioned, this has been a collaborative project with officers and members from the four authorities working closely with Hampshire services who've um, developed the plan for us to achieve, achieve an adoptable plan for central and eastern Berkshire. So the four recommendations are set out uh, in section three of the report and happy to take any questions. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. Colleagues, are there any questions at this stage? No? Then uh, councillor, councillor Mrs Hayes, over to you. Oh no, beg your pardon, sorry, councillor Turrell, forgive me. Thanks, uh, uh, Leader. Happy to move the recommendations on pages 15 and 16. Thank you. And I will second that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's seconded by Councillor Mrs Hayes. OK. 
Okay. Um, well, thank you very much. It's um, uh, very good to be able to move this and uh, um, to bring it forward for adoption on its uh, process through um, the four different councils, um, uh, their, their equivalent bodies, um, to, to make this plan um, come into being. Um, as has been mentioned, the, the cooperation between four very different authorities with very different, um, uh, in a very different position in terms of um, uh, mineral extraction um, in their areas uh, and, and also waste disposal, um, but all have worked well together. The um, work by Hampshire Services has been very professional and very focused throughout, and that has really helped um, in terms of the, the good progress of this plan. Um, so uh, that's, that's, a re that's really helpful. Going, um, looking at the history, uh, it is uh, a considerable number of years since the last one, um, and uh, the, the dates are there, um, uh, December 98 and uh, 2001. Um, so it's it was due for um, uh, due due for a new plan. The uh, the sourcing of minerals and the disposal of waste are important um, activities uh, undertaken by councils, and uh, it's it's very important to have a plan, particularly when you have differences between the minerals used in the area and the minerals available in the area. Um, there is a deficit in this area, so minerals many minerals and aggregates have to be brought in. Um, and the plan basically uh, has gone through where the sites are available uh, and where not, and has uh, seeked or sought also to, um, uh, to to cover off the, any availability po um, possibilities with a, a policy on um, areas of search uh, to, to cover um, sites that may not actually have been identified but which um, might possibly come forward at some time in the future. There's also a policy in there on the site, uh, on site history, um, and, and that basically deals with uh, um, waste disposal sites where um, there may have been different operators over the years, and that has been a, um, uh, that's been a, a useful policy to, to bring in. That's that's really that's a very inno innovative policy. So um, really, as I say, really pleased to be moving this forward uh, and as has been said it will come to uh, um, full council in January for um, adoption. Thank you very much Councillor Tarrell, thank you. Um, would the seconder like to speak? I need to concur with what Councillor Tarrell has stated, being the, set the, me the other member with him on this particular committee, working with the councils we've worked with, it has been encouraging to say that we got on very well and the importance of that this council has an up-to-date and robust planning framework is important, sir, and that I would agree with and would ask those to agree. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? No? Councillor Tarrell, would you like to sum up? I don't think there's anything more to okay. be said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Colleagues, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. And that is unanimous. Thanks. Chair, before we start this item, um, I, I've just realised I probably should have asked for a clarification around a potential conflict of interest on this next item. I currently chair Warfield Parish Council. <laughs> Whether that uh, is a... Yeah, so... No, that, yeah. that's okay. Just thought okay. I should uh, mention that at thank this you. point. Okay, thank you very much referring to that um, so uh, agenda item six is the Warfield development plan um, for 2013-2037 and uh, making the plan um, oh thank oh. Um, uh, which is uh, uh, making the plan uh, and uh, uh, under section 38a Part four of the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act 2004 as amended. And that's to be introduced by the Executive Director of Place Planning and Regeneration, if once again. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. 
Thanks, Lydra. It's got a snappy title, hasn't it? It um, has. So, um, <laughs> so the report before executive seeks the approval to make the uh, Warfield Neighbourhood Plan. Um, the Neighbourhood Plan has been developed by Warfield Parish Council and has followed the normal steps in preparing a plan of this type. This includes designating the, the plan area, which took place in 2014. Um, the plan has been developed and has been brought forward through engaging with residents so that the production of the plan can get to this particular stage. Um, and that's included consulting on a site allocation at Hayley Green. The plan got through the various stages of consultation and was examined by a neighbourhood planner, uh, a neighbourhood plan inspector, um, who then made some suggested modifications to the plan and agreed that following those modifications, the plan would be fit to go to referendum stage. Um, the referendum took place on the 17th of November 2022, and out of the 1,600, sorry, 1,063 people who voted, 882 of them voted that the plan should be used for determining planning applications in the neighbourhood plan area. So, subject to agreement tonight from the executive, the plan will come into force on the 21st of December um, of this year and will be used as the part of the Council's policy framework for dealing with planning applications in the Warfield area. Once in, in, enforced, the, uh, the, plan, uh, the, the Parish Council will be entitled to 25% of all SIL receipts collected within the plan area. As the report states, the plan will be prepared, um, has been prepared by Warfield Parish Council with assistance from various officers from across the, um, the Council and has entailed extensive work from all parties to get to this final stage. So the recommendations are set out at section three of the report and seeks approval to make the plan and agree the decision statement. Happy to take any questions. Thanks very much, thank you. Are there any questions? No, then Councillor Torrey. Thanks, Lido. Happy to move the recommendation for making of this uh, of the Warfield neighbourhood plan. Um, and uh, uh, do I have a second? Sorry. That's okay. seconded. Thank you, Councillor. Um, it's uh, very uh, good to be able to welcome this plan and to um, uh, congratulate the, all those involved in, in uh, bringing it uh, um, through its through its stages, which has taken some years. Neighbourhood plans are um, very hard work for, for many of the people involved because they're not trained planners. Um, uh, this is the fourth plan in Bracknell Forest to be uh, made, and um, but also the first, which which has a designated site at Haley Green for just over 200 houses. Um, that's uh, that's to be welcomed, as is the um, uh, the comfortable yes margin in the vote in, in a turnout, which is uh, pretty much in line with uh, with expectations for for the neighbourhood plan. Um, the, the, there's a range of policies there um, which have been uh, see been be well um, well thought out and well examined um, and uh, um, so really very pleased to see this see this uh, document come forward and take its place in our planning policy documents thank you thank you very much uh, councillor Torrell councillor Birch a seconder would you like to speak uh, I think uh, Councillor Darrell's made an excellent uh, speech on uh, on it. Uh, I just commend it for the value to the community. Thank you. Fine. Thank you very much. Colleagues, anybody else? Yes, Councillor Dr Barnard. Yeah. Ha having been allowed not to declare an interest in this, I think it's important as a borough councillor for Warfield, but also as a parish councillor to make it very clear that we appreciate all the support that we've got and the fact that um, I think it's 83% of those who expressed, you know, a wish supported the plan, but that uh, we also respect those 17% who at this point in time felt that this was not a supportable plan. Um, the, the neighbourhood plan has already facing its first test, and that is that uh, the developer for um, the Hayley Green presented a, you know, one of those sort of open events. And I think it's fair to say to make it very, very clear to everyone that Warfield Parish Council will defend the plan, the policies, the outline concepts and things that were set out in it and I think they're very supported by all the councillors that represent parts of Warfield and that therefore it is something that we know has been actually of use so far it's been cited in determining at least two appeals that I'm aware of and many more 
and therefore it's of huge um, significance in terms of what it does in terms of defining um, how development takes place in Warfield. I think the other thing that's really important is that everyone thinks of um, the, the neighbourhood plan as a, you know, a planning document per se, you know, where development happens and how things look. But let's not underestimate the SIL, that's the additional money that will go to the parish council um, and therefore the community as a consequence of this plan, which means that there can be significant investment in amenities and works in the community, not just to compensate and ameliorate the new development taking place in Warfield, but also to enhance the facilities. And as colleagues will know, um, and our historic, historical decision in many ways, going back a number of years, that there are significant plans to develop a community hub in Warfield, and the neighbourhood plan will help, I think, you know, facilitate and support that going forward. So again, thanks to the Borough Council, all those involved for the work, those residents who came out on a cold night, and it was a cold night, to, um, to, to, to express their wishes for this. Um, and I think, Councillor Tone, introducing it, you, you said the turnout was in line with others, and, and that actually, you know, there was a strong majority, but I think the important thing when taking a neighbourhood plan forward is to really make sure that we continue to represent and support the views of all those who expressed a view and do what we can to ensure that there is no detriment to them as a consequence of this plan, providing it's in line with the plan. And, and, I, and, you know, and therefore, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased to support this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to participate? No? Then uh, back to you, Councillor Torrell, for summing up. Yeah, thank you, um, Leader. Yes, and just to pick up on a couple of points there. Yes, the, the value of the extra SIL community infrastructure levy to the community is... Um, at, at parish level is uh, uh, is um, notable, and uh, they parish at that level they have more leeway in terms of the projects it can be used for. Um, so so that uh, does give a, a, a boost um, across across the the parish and the, the, the plan area. Um, and uh, I'm sure that, that because this is very much Warfield's plan, um, uh, they will um, uh, be. The parish council will be looking to uh, looking at the implementation of it and and the policies that they have uh, um, they have worked on and seeing them come into fruition um, and and to see that, that to see them actually in use and I think that's actually a very um, uh, a very interesting point for people who've been involved in it actually see, seeing how it all how it all works um, so uh, I think those are um, those those are points I would make on that thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Colleagues, uh, would all those in favour please show? Thank you. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we move on to agenda item 7, beginning on page 263, which is the capital programme for 2023-4 to four and 2025-6. to six. And that's to be introduced by our Executive Director Resources. all while we play musical chairs. <laughs> Thank you, Leader. Thank um, you. So the Council is required to consult each year in December on its draft budget proposals. Uh, there's then a six-week consultation period after which the Executive will propose final budget proposals uh, onto full Council. I'm sure the first one of these will be around the uh, technology in the Council Chamber to make sure it's working. <laughs> um, so the, the first paper on tonight's agenda related to the budget is for the capital programme, so that's the proposed investment in uh, the borough's infrastructure. So there's a, a number of schemes proposed which both uh, seek to maintain and enhance the, the assets that we hold. Um, the funding for this proposal comes from a variety of sources. Um, we do get some government funding, some government grant. We also will secure some funding from developers in the borough and through some disposals of other assets that we hold. However, any funding which cannot be uh, met by those sources will need to be met by borrowing 
the impact of borrowing is the same as any other borrowing in that it will have interest and principal repayments associated with it and that will make its way through into the revenue budget. So for that reason, given the, the tightness of the revenue budget, then we try to keep the capital spending plans as low as possible each year while making sure that our assets do not deteriorate. Um, so the, the proposed funding this year to be met from the Council's resources is £6.4 million. Uh, that's a little bit more than typically we would like to uh, include. However, more than half of that does relate to the ongoing financial impact of schemes previously approved last year. So it's not new schemes, it's just the, the remaining funding required to bring those schemes to, to fruition. So the proposals are that the Executive asked to approve for consultation the Council funded capital programme of 6.4 million, uh, the 5.9 million pounds funded from external sources, and uh, 1 million pound budget for invest to save schemes to be managed by the corporate management team. That's all for by way of introduction, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. Colleagues, do we have any questions at this moment in time? No, then Councillor Hayden, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to move the recommendations on the papers on page 263, sections 2, 2.1 to 2.3. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that seconded? Councillor Birch, thank you very much. Um, I'll keep this brief just to add and try not to repeat uh, what Stuart said. Um, as, is the per as is the case every year, it's to maintain and enhance the uh, Council's assets. Um, there's a variety of funding, so it's not just from our own funding, but we have to main, try to maintain the funding as low as possible, which is our normal custom. All I can say is that it's prudent and pragmatic, therefore I do recommend it for acceptance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would the seconder like to speak? Uh, very briefly, uh, Chairman. Uh, the... Uh, the point of this is to take uh, uh, this report, this, a lot of hard work has got into arriving at, uh, as the word was used, a prudent uh, uh, recommendation to uh, our residents and our partners and anybody that wants to uh, respond, to read in detail and respond to us uh, as to uh, their thoughts on uh, the effectiveness of uh, what we're planning to do with capital monies uh, in the ensuing year, etc. So, uh, as this is for going out for consultation, and we're, uh, uh, we are a very listening administration, uh, uh, we will be listening very carefully to any of the responses we get in this area and I look forward then to the results of that consultation. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed Councillor Birch. Yes uh, indeed Councillor Harrison. Thank you. Um, I'd like to um, uh, commend uh, our, our officers on, on the, the great job of putting a budget together which contributes very well to our objectives as a council. I think in, in straightened circumstances, our residents will want to know that that we are doing our best to make sure that, that we're not wasting anything. And there are no white elephants in this. We've been through it with a, with a fine tooth comb. But we are meeting some of the other objectives that we have as a council. I'm, I'm quite happy that in, in the uh, maintenance and the, the replacement of a lot of the kit in our leisure facilities, for example, we're replacing old pumps or we're replacing old air conditioning systems with things that are going to be a lot more efficient and effective. And that means, of course, we're contributing there towards our climate objectives as well as a council. It, it demonstrates this is another piece of business as usual that this council does, which is combating our impact on the climate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Any further contributions? No? Then, Councillor Hayden, would you care to sum up? Thank you, Chair. I take it the microphones aren't working at all, are they? Yeah. Are they? Yeah, yours is. Yeah. Yours is on. Yeah, but it's not, it's not broadcast, is it? It is. Oh, all right. Yeah. Sorry. I can hear you coming from more than one direction. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I think, uh, thank you, then. Thank you for my colleagues' uh, um, comments is it is 
there to maintain and enhance the council's assets. Uh, there is a variety of funding, but I think all members have commented on its uh, prudence and it, the pragmatism of it. Um, a, th a thank you to all the officers who prepared it. Um, it's continuing to uh, gain the confidence of our residents, and it will be going out for consultation. I understand it will go. The consultation starts tomorrow yep. um, for six weeks. Um, the other point which Councillor Harrison made is it also, apart from enhancing, it is actually uh, acknowledging and um, addressing our climate change uh, requirements. So I'd like to uh, put it to my colleagues to support the budgets, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Colleagues, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thanks very much indeed. And we move on to agenda item eight, which is the uh, which starts on page 283 and is the general fund revenue budget for 2023-24. Once again, to be introduced by our executive director of resources. Thank you again, leader. So the second report on the budget this evening covers the spending on day-to-day -day council services, uh, the sorts of revenue budget proposals. Um, the revenue budget this year has been uh, dominated really by the impact of inflation, uh, like um, all parts of society, all, all organisations we have been impacted significantly. To put it in context, we would normally include somewhere between two and three million pounds in our budget for the impact of inflation on price increases each year. Uh, this year's proposals include almost ten million pounds, so more than three times more than we would typically expect to see. Uh, so recognising that, we have tried to be as tight as we possibly can on, on other spending pressures which have been brought forward, uh, but there are proposals for additional spend of £4.4 million within the revenue budget pressures. They, as the, in the previous item, have been scrutinised very carefully and we feel that they are the, the, the top priority issues which the Council really does need to put some money into. Uh, to help fund those proposals, we have identified £7.7 .7 million of savings this year, so very significant contribution towards the overall funding position. However, despite that, we still face, without uh, a council tax increase, a budget gap of somewhere in the order of £8.2 million. Uh, I stress somewhere in the order of, because yet again, we have had to prepare a draft budget without knowing what the actual financial settlement is going to be for local authorities. Uh, so we will find that out next week, possibly Monday, possibly Tuesday. Uh, there was a policy announcement by uh, the department yesterday which brought a little bit of clarity on a few things, so such as the council tax limit thresholds will be set at 3% generally and 2% for adult social care precept, both for 23-24 and 24-25, <coughs> uh, so that has been confirmed. It was also confirmed that we will see an inflationary increase in our revenue support grant However, given that the revenue support grant for Brighton Forest is only £1.8 million, it doesn't go very far, a 10% increase towards the scale of our budget challenges. Um, so therefore, we, we will need to, to look very carefully at what the, the settlement is when it comes out. Members will know that Brighton Forest is um, particularly <coughs> affected this year by transfers to and from the, the central list for business rates. We are, um, in monetary terms, that double any other local authority in terms of the impact on us of the change that we expect to see. So therefore, that <laughs> brings particularly significant risk around how the government manages that transfer. Um, I'm hopeful it will be fairly neutral on us, but until we get the settlement and work through the numbers, we won't be able to say that with certainty. But um, I, I, I have hope around that element of it. Um, so a, a very challenging budget year uh, this year, Leader, as all local authorities are going through. We do expect to have to draw from reserves when we balance the budget in February, whatever the decisions around council tax and savings come in at. It, the, the only question is to what extent we will need to draw on reserves to, to get to a balanced position. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Hayden. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'd like to move the recommendations on uh, page 283 and 284 of our papers, uh, items 2.1 to 2.6 inclusive. I'd like to make no, a second recommendation. Second it. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barnard. Councillor Hayden, back to you. Thank you. Um, try not to repeat too much what uh, our Director of Resources already said. Um, 
we're always under pressure in terms of um, our revenue expenses. Uh, it's particularly difficult this year because the inflation is much, much higher, and the officers have had to accommodate that in setting the budgets. Um, at the moment, although we will go out for uh, consultation tomorrow on this as well, we won't get the final settlement until, well, it, I understand by statute it has to be here before Christmas. So the last Monday, Tuesday next week are probably the last days it can be released. Um, I'm uh, also very aware that uh, the potential transfer to the central list of some of the, uh, affects the business rates. That is well over 20% of our business rates income. Uh, so that's another factor which uh, we've got to look into. And until we actually get the final settlement, um, we do have a gap. It's probable, if not certain, that you know, council tax increases will go as far as possible to reach that gap, but we're likely to uh, have to fall back on reserves as well. And another thank you to the officers in that our financial position in reserves, um, while it's not inexhaustible, I'll continue to support the council's operations. I think we should thank you for that. So I'd unhesitatingly would ask my colleagues to um, support the revenue budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Dr. Palmer. Yeah, thank you. In supporting everything that Councillor Hayden says, I think, you know, as still becomes apparent today that, you know, there's huge uncertainty over some of the levels of service provision we need to make next year in terms of supporting, you know, our more vulnerable residents. I mean, and, and, and just looking short what I gave, I mean, you know, the prospects for inflation and things like that are also very uncertain as well. You know, some modelling suggesting it will fall away next year, some suggesting it won't. But what we do know is that notwithstanding um, well, what Stuart said in terms of the financial settlement, there's huge uncertainty around what we will need to do, and which is why I think when we go out for consultation on this, what I ask residents to do is to look at this and think, does this form the basis for delivering sustainable services that will meet the needs of the residents that we actually have in there sort of thinking this through. Um, but actually in this recognising as well that at least one of the identified changes in budgeting forward, of course, is the reduction in effectively the landfill tax. I think it's worth highlighting there that, you know, how our residents by working with us have actually significantly managed to actually save a not insignificant amount of money in the course of the year, plus also assisting with, you know, positive environmental messaging. So. Um, huge amount of work's gone into this, um, you, you know, just sort of in general discussions over the last few weeks, thinking ahead in terms of how all the services will work, um, it, it's really good. And there, there are no dramatic changes in here. I think it's actually how we work to actually manage and sustain this. But uh, hopefully people will take part in the consultation where we, you know, we get that final last bit of detail, Stuart, in terms of actually helping us do this, but recognise at all times that our ambition is to provide good services, but still you know, raise as the lowest possible level of council tax as we can that delivers to sustainable services. So the cautionary word I'd finish here is that, yes, we have got a very strong position in terms of balances, but what you've heard tonight and what you will see in this and here elsewhere is it's how you manage the use of reserves um, during the course of a period of time, which is important in terms of sustaining services. So, again, something I would hope, you know, residents could look at here is how actually we work that into our planning there will be many councils meeting to consider their consultation this evening where they are taking decisions because of a financial situation that they are in where they don't have this starting point in terms of managing uncertainty. And I think that's really, really important. That's what we've tried to do. But again, really interested in the views that come back and how we can do more to uh, you know, best allocate and best manage resources over the next year, 18 months. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to contribute? No? Then Councillor Hayden, back to you to sum up, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to repeat a phrase from the uh, capital budgets is that uh, the uh, revenue budget is, again, um, prudent and pragmatic. Um, we are, apart, in addition to the normal pressures, there's uh, inflationary pressure, which is uh, it's certainly greater than anything I've experienced in my career as a, an elected member. The uncertainties are twofold. One is the uncertainties that we won't know the final settlement until next week. So we're still 
working slightly in the dark, but that's, that's the normal situation. But we would get the final settlement before Christmas. Uh, there are additional pressures <coughs> this year. Uh, there's the threat about losing um, one of our major business rate uh, sources up to the central list. But I think the really positive things is that um, I thank the officers for helping us manage the uncertainties of the current Absolutely. thing. And that's uh, borrowing Council Barnard's expression there about managing uncertainties, so thank you. Um, we still have as our absolute priority is supporting residents, particularly our vulnerable residents, which has become even more important given the other factors affecting them beyond inflation, uh, and that we're maintaining our service delivery, which we continue to be proud of. There's a manifesto pledge that we should stay within the 10% lowest cost uh, council taxes amongst the other unit, amongst the unitary authorities, and I'm confident we shall hold our position in that and continue to hold our manifesto pledge. So once again, unreservedly, uh, thank you to the officers, and would put the revenue budget proposals to the vote, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Colleagues, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, we move now to agenda item nine, which is the council plan overview report. And that's to be introduced by Katie Flint. Yes, unfortunately we, we've got, Katie is available online, but unfortunately okay. um, I think our microphones aren't working, so I'm going to take the item instead, oh, right. if that's okay. okay. In which case, Sorry over, to, over to you, Chief Executive. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is a report that you see each quarter, um, and you've, you've, you've seen countless numbers of these um, over the years. Uh, and so this one reflects the, the last quarter, quarter two, between July and September. But hopefully you've probably noticed a few differences in how we're presenting some of this information. And it would continue to evolve um, over time as we try and crystallise and synthesise um, a huge, vast array of um, <coughs> performance indicators that we have to, to show how well the, the authority is performing um, into a succinct um, format for people to understand um, what's going well and, and what needs to, to improve. Um, so some of those changes include making some of the narrative section a little bit more engaging. Um, it, it's the same type of information, but it's more, we're making it a lot more visual, so it's, it's easier to review. Um, we um, uh, are using some additional gra graphs, um, have been added throughout the report, again, just so uh, enable us to present that information in more user-friendly and consumable um, format so we can identify trends. Um, and patterns coming through. Um, and we've also added a new, new section to include, <coughs> excuse me, a number of community health indicators to give that broader context of performance um, against other authorities. Um, we're also improving some of the website content for publishing for, for this report um, uh, that will go out uh, later this week. Um, so in terms of the detail in the report, uh, the performance data contained um, in it, there are some highlights for this quarter, including um, the outstanding rating that we received for our children's services from Ofsted, um, an excellent result. Um, agreeing a, a dedicated financial hardship action plan, taking a more strategic, sustainable and cross-council approach. Uh, facilitating a number of community events, uh, particularly related to, to the Royal Funeral, and the continued support of this council um, for Ukrainian arrivals and their hosts in the community. Um, of course, um, the last quarter wouldn't be without certain challenges that many councils have been facing, uh, including the, and as we've um, highlighted in the earlier two items, um, continued to have to deal with the inflationary um, uh, costs uh, uh, and, and those challenges that they present um, and COVID related sickness is still impacting um, staff or, uh, and, and that's a continuing evolving picture. Despite the challenges, the vast majority, 81% of the actions set out in the council um, plan um, are green uh, and therefore are either complete or on track to be delivered. Um, and the full details of the actions are set out within the report along with the commentary provided. Uh, so I think I shall leave it there and if you've got any questions, happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
colleagues, are there any questions at this moment? No? Then uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, move the uh, recommendation um, as uh, on page 421, 2.1, uh, and to note the performance of the council over the period included. Um, can that be seconded? Thank you, Councillor Birch. And in, um, uh, in, in, I think uh, that it, it's only right to uh, uh, repeat um, what the Chief Executive said in, indeed. Um, there are some notable achievements during this quarter. Um, of course, the, the fact that the Council's children's services were rated outstanding by Ofsted wonderful and uh, and a, a great achievement and congratulations to all those who who, uh, 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 who who assisted with that and if I could ask the director to take back our our uh, uh, congratulations to her team uh, I know these things don't <coughs> happen by accident and they they don't happen without an awful lot of work and so thank you very much yeah. and uh, the uh, financial hardship action plan, which uh, uh, regrettably uh, is necessary for so many of our residents who um, very often, uh, I understand, for the first time in their lives, they're uh, encountering difficulties due to the, um, uh, you know, in recent times, unprecedented um, rising prices that they're facing with many of the essentials of life. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, also the support for the Ukrainians, which I think is exemplary. And it's, it's wonderful and humbling to see how um, our residents are responding there to the leadership shown by the borough. And uh, they are opening their homes and their hearts to the refugees from the Ukraine. And, uh, uh, and those people are becoming uh, um, uh, very useful members of our community, um, even though they hope to just be guests for a short period of time. And we hope that uh, too, that they will in the future have the choice of returning to their homeland should they wish to do so. Um, and, and I think it, it, it would be uh, uh, wrong not to uh, also comment on the excellent work done by a number of departments um, regarding the events surrounding the demise of Her Majesty the Queen. Um, the, uh, the events which uh, had been planned for some time, as these things are always um, planned, um, but of course, those plans have to be brought into uh, I into use um, in a matter of hours, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, everyone involved deserves a, uh, a a real vote of thanks from this uh, this executive, because uh, the council it was uh, undoubtedly handled extremely well by the council. And, uh, uh, and the, the public commented um, on many occasions to me and I'm sure to others um, of how well the council had responded to what was a, a, uh, a, a, a very poignant moment in the history of this country. And of course, we look forward to the coronation of His Majesty and uh, the, uh, uh, the part, the the, the key part that uh, the borough will play for the borough's residents uh, on that occasion. So uh, uh, all in all, uh, a, a very uh, a, a very exceptional quarter, I think, but, uh, uh, but uh, I, I would ask the chief executive to um, thank um, uh, the staff because uh, they rose to the various challenges very well and I know the that we're all very proud of uh, the work that uh, that they put in. So thank you. 
Uh, so, colleagues, I hope that you'll be able to support the recommendation also. Councillor Dr Barnard. Yeah, thank you. Um, just thought I'd just add a few words of context for a couple of things that you mentioned. Um, yes, it, it, it was, I, th I think, you know, really good that we received the outstanding judgment for children's services as part of the ILAX inspection this summer. And uh, for colleagues that were there, I think, um, given the cohort of youngsters we're dealing with, I think the, um, you know, the comment that will stick in my mind for a long time was when actually the inspector said, if I was a child that needed to be looked after, then... I would want to be looked after and supported in Ratnal Forest. And I right. think that was um, to everyone involved, um, particularly the practitioners, but I also think to you know, members involved in that is a really um, you know, strong testament to their understanding of how the council works. I think the second thing in, in terms of children and people and learning is the observation in there that we are now ranked sixth in terms of the number of local authorities in terms of good and outstanding schools. Now, um, you, you, you can work through statistics and the maths, but one school in Bratnell Forest accounts for 3%, whereas in a larger authority, it could be less than 1%. So, again, you know, a significant movement in the right direction. Um, huge amount of hard work in our schools, but also, I think, ably supported by, you know, officers in the council. You know, we adopted a vision for school improvement, and that's been delivered on. Um, also mentioned there, and I think we, we, we have to put this into context, is that after our first monitoring meeting for the DFE following the um, SEND inspection, they cited that they were, they were pleased with our progress against the written statement of action. In the interest of openness and transparency, we're looking how best we can actually record the data relating to SEND in, in an open, public and scrutinisable format. But I think the, the underlying story is, yes, there are still significant issues in a service which is on an improvement journey, but the catch-up, the work, the systems, the procedures, the processes that are being put in place will mean that I think as the months go ahead, we will have a service which meets its legal commitments and then actually can push on for ambition to be as outstanding as other services. But, but I mean, there, there will be those families out there who will hear what we're talking about in this directory and say, well, hang on, you know, that's not for every child. And we're very, very clear um, as a council and as administration that until we're meeting the needs of all children, whatever the vulnerability and needs they have, we will not consider ourselves to be an outstanding authority um, in, in totality. So I think that's important. But overall, um, can I also uh, th thank uh, the Chief Executive for the format and the way the information is being presented. I, I, I think it does make it more accessible. and I think it makes it easier for us to track those indicators that we wish to, um, in particular where we need actually additional data to populate it, and this is one area where we can. But I, I found a very good format and would like to also echo your comments, I think, um, the, the officers at Bratnell Forest Council supported the community very well um, during uh, the, the events surrounding the passing of Her Majesty the Queen, and I think it brought the borough together in a very, very strong way. And I think also to commend the role that the mayor had in terms of leading those commemorations as well through that. So I think a very, very good uh, quarter's worth of work. And just to conclude, when we say good and outstanding schools, it really matters because it means that all our children that need additional support can easily and comfortably go to a good or outstanding school, which is the ambition of any local authority in this regard. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further contributions? Uh, Peter, Councillor Hayden. Thank you. I'd also like to echo Councillor Barnard's um, comments and praise about the readability of the report. Thank you for that. <laughs> the, um, there are three things I just wanted to highlight. From a financial perspective, uh, it's back to the platform for the way the council's run is based on sound financial management. Yeah. And I know we always acknowledge it, but that continues to be the strength of the council. Uh, then the two other things. One is Council Barnard's comments about the uh, welfare and hardship, particularly of vulnerable children. Yeah. I think you know, that's spectacularly good work. Yeah. And it's all summed up if a, you know, a very authoritative body is able to say publicly that if they're going to be a vulnerable child, the best place they would like to be would be within Bratnell Forest. I just think that's something we should be so proud of. Mm. So all who contributed to that, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Birch, a seconder, would you like to speak? Actually, there's nothing for me to say, is well, there, well. other than I, too, <laughs> agree with the readability of it, which, which, given the amount of work that's involved, given all the things that we deliver for some of the most vulnerable people in our community, 
um, being able to get quickly and accurately at the information that lets us continue to deliver those excellent services, I think is vital to good and effective decision making. And I know uh, this council is well regarded in terms of its decision making and its ability to go with the flow, move with the times and to recognise when it has to the need to make adjustments and you can see that uh, uh, not just in this quarter but looking back over uh, uh, previous quarters and, and I'm uh, hoping that any of the people looking to make a response to our consultation on the budget can look at some of the ways that uh, this authority, the officers and the member, have been able to respond to those demands and still keep the lights on, keep the wheels turning and to keep uh, a very high satisfaction level in the vast majority of areas. So uh, uh, compliments to everybody involved in making that data what it is. But as they say, where it's not as sharp as it should be, we will continue to focus. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, in summing up, uh, I, I'd just like to say uh, an excellent quarter's work, and uh, and I, um, I'm, it gives me great pleasure to uh, recommend this uh, this report to colleagues. And with that, colleagues, all those in favour, please show. Thank you, and that is unanimous. Thanks very much indeed. Um, we now move to exclusion of the press and public. Uh, if we can take that as read, um, can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barnard. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. So uh, I don't think there's anybody to exclude. Let's just wait. But for uh, 